Hi, I'm Cara Wheel and I teach at Jane Court Grammar School and I'm teaching Key Stage 4 students about William Blake's London poem. I want you to take your poem and I want you, because it's all in alphabetical order and I've taken away all the grammatical words, I want you individually to highlight the five words that really stand out to you. The poem I've decided to do in a completely different style to normal. I'm not going to give them the actual poem in front of them as it exists. I'm going to make it alphabetical. I can take out any grammatical words like a and the and at. And there I'm left with the bare bones, the real poetry words that I want to explore. These words are the ones our class notice first of all. What do they have in common, perhaps, for this class? Anyone venture an idea? Jack. They all suggest fear and darkness. Can we, um... Perhaps put uh, two words together that you would link in that way. Um, blood and midnight. OK, so there we got that one and that one and linked together. OK, blood and midnight. That's suggesting perhaps murder. Horror, murder. Horror, horror movies. So we've got already an atmosphere in this poem. We're sort of getting that just from a few words. Now I'd like you two uh, and your partners to go through and to find any more patterns. Remember, it's patterns you're going for, they will open out the poem. The key learning objective for this lesson is that the students will be able to explore poetry in a critical and imaginative way. It's a, an open, unstructured way. They're left to their own devices in one sense. We've got the idea of Black Plague, the London, because of the, all the words that relate to darkness and all the words that relate to death. Um, the manacles, the handcuffs, so we thought that would link with weakness because um, when you're handcuffed, you can't do anything, it makes you feel weak. They start off very slowly, but now they're starting to get more confident with what they're doing. Um, that's the openness of this particular approach. And some of the people are realising that actually they can make connections and it's working for them. And when they get to see the poem in its entirety, they'll be quite surprised how accurate they were. I thought it could be set in London because it's got London and Thames. Yeah. And it's got chimney sweepers and chimney sweepers are most common in London. So what do you got, you've already got context. Yeah. And I, and I didn't tell you which context it was. No. OK, we know for well it's last century or the century before that because of, of the chimney sweeps. Yeah. Um, what else are you getting there from that? How about the word chartered? Um, it makes it all seem like organised because it all seems rather deathly, but then you've got organised. Organised death? Yeah. Ooh. That is, that is good. If you knew the real context, you have got so close to cracking this poem. If you see it like this first, then you read the actual poem afterwards, it tends to make more sense because you understand the words better. I think it's easier having it like this because then you can look at like the, each individual word and like discuss its importance. Well, we've moved from language now and spotting patterns. The most important part then is to look at structure. And so what I've done is I've jumbled up some of the lines and given them some lines in the correct order. They can then put the poem back together again. Basically, through exploration, we're re-jigsawing the, 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 uh, the poem and eventually they'll see the entire whole and it'll make a huge difference to their understanding. So the rhyme schemes, A, B, A, B, so the street and me, you have one minute to memorise as many words as possible from this poem. One person from each group will then come forward and they'll write down as many words as possible and see which team gets the most words. One of the most important reasons why I use this, this approach is because I want the students to go on a learning journey. I want them to explore independently, to have fun doing it and to get to their own conclusions. And it, I've seen they're quite confidently uh, analysing a very difficult poem. And go. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty words for that lot. Twenty words. Let's have a look at yours then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, so Stuart, it's the winner! Yay! 
that was phenomenal. Uh, for, for reluctant learners who normally wouldn't want to uh, touch a poem like this and to uh, have picked out any information from it and make, make connections, they were incredibly engaged. And the last game, the collective memory game, well, they really had to use all their poetic uh, tools. I was, I was really pleased to see that some of the most reluctant people were the most engaged and won.